Hello everyone and welcome to this year's Grosvenor Grammar School Year 13 Parent Information Talk for parents and carers of pupils who have started senior school this year. My name is Mrs Peel and I am the head of Year 13 and I will be giving this presentation. In this presentation, I will be focusing on three broad areas relating to senior school. Firstly, academic information relating to the A-level examinations the AS's in year 13 and the A2's in year 14. Secondly, I will be discussing the features of senior school. And thirdly, I will be outlining some information in relation to pastoral care. To begin with, all pupils in year 13 will be offered a curriculum in Grosvenor that facilitates the study of three subjects throughout each of the two years. It is therefore anticipated that the vast majority of pupils will study for three AS or BTEC qualifications in year 13 and three A2 or BTEC qualifications in year 14. The weekly timetable that pupils will follow in year 13 will look somewhat different to that that they have experienced in junior and middle school. In relation to each of their three chosen subjects, they will be allocated nine periods per week. In addition to this, pupils will also be allocated two periods of games every Wednesday afternoon four periods of the enrichment programme, one period of careers or CEIAG, one period of general studies which takes place on a Wednesday, as well as between five and nine periods of independent study per week. In terms of this provision, a key consideration is that it prepares pupils as best as possible for higher education which is particularly important given that the overwhelming majority of Grosvenor pupils go on to pursue a higher education pathway. In relation to general studies, for example, it features a number of outside speakers from universities as well as various other organisations who speak to the pupils about different opportunities and pathways that may be available to them beyond Grosvenor. And it is seen as a very important feature of the senior school experience. At this point, it is perhaps important to provide an outline of the examination structure and how your child's assessments over the coming two years will be structured and weighted. As you can see on the slide, while year 14 carries a heavier weighting, being worth 60% of the overall A-level grade or 240 UMS marks, as opposed to 40% and 160 UMS marks in year 13, the first of these two years is still incredibly important in terms of pupils setting themselves up to perform as well as possible at A2 level. It is imperative that pupils work as hard as they can from September in year 13, not just to achieve the best grades that they are capable of at AS level, but to maximise the number of UMS marks that they can achieve also. It should be noted that entry into year 14 from year 13 is not automatically guaranteed. And there is a set of criteria that pupils are expected to meet. Firstly, they are expected to achieve a minimum of three grade Ds or 32 points in a system whereby an A equates to 20 points, a B 16 points, a C 12 points, a D 10 points, and an E is six points. Secondly, Pupils must also satisfy Dr. Vesey as regards their attitude and behaviour. In this case, it is essential that they adhere to the high standards expected in Grosvenor and they meet the expectations outlined in the senior school contract that they received at the beginning of year 13 and which both they and you as parents were asked to sign earlier this month. Having covered the issue of examinations and matters relating to it, the second area I'm going to discuss relates to the features of senior school. The senior school team consists of myself as head of year 13, Mr. Lendrum as head of year 14, and Mr. Cowan as head of senior school. It is important to note that any general queries should be directed to your child's form tutor in the first instance. Issues of a more serious or delicate nature will be addressed by myself as head of year, and then finally Mr. Cowan as the overall head of senior school. An important feature of senior school is independent study. The idea of independent study is that pupils in senior school are afforded a degree of responsibility in being trusted to work independently. In year 14, pupils are given a larger degree of independence and they are trusted to work without any supervision. In year 13, however, it is felt that some supervision is still needed 
and there is a senior school study supervisor who plays a key role in encouraging the pupils whilst also providing structure and motivation for them in their studies. In addition to work that is carried out during the periods of independent study, it is also expected that pupils should be studying for between 12 and 15 hours a week outside school. In years 13 and 14, it is much harder to cram for exams, like may have been possible at GCSE level, and so it is imperative that both independent study time and that carried out at home is maximised throughout the year. As I've often said to the pupils, if you are working as hard as possible in school and completing the number of hours that are expected at home, then you are giving yourself the best chance of success in the exams. Finally, while it is of course important to work hard in senior school, there are always a number of pupils in any year group who, if anything, go too far above and beyond. And in such instances, it is worth a reminder that while the schoolwork is important, it is also essential to have a balance between work and play, with the latter being important in order to alleviate the pressure and the stress that inevitably comes with sitting A-levels. The enrichment programme runs for four periods a week in total. And as you can see from this slide, there are two aspects to the enrichment programme in its current guise. Firstly, the compulsory elements make up two periods per week and they run over three blocks during the year. And as part of this element, pupils this year can choose between a wide range of options such as interview techniques, leadership, online presence, presentation skills, study skills and word power in the workplace. There's also an optional element and this makes up two periods a week also. Here pupils select between options such as Young Enterprise, Leisure Sports, Couch to 5K, there's also Zumba, First Aid, Cooking on a Budget, Chinese Culture, Basic Mandarin, Current Affairs, Sign Language and Irish Dancing. Careers or CEIAG, under the guidance of its Head of Department, Mrs Pryor, is a very important feature in senior school. Within this subject, the first number of months of the year are spent action planning, with pupils spending their time working out what they want to achieve from a career point of view, and then establishing what they need to do to give them the best chance of success. For example, what academic grades are they likely to require in order to be able to pursue their desired pathway? And how are they most likely to achieve these? In addition, what work experience would prove most beneficial to them in this pathway? A hugely important final feature of the Year 13 CEIAG programme is preparation for UCAS. It is completed early in Year 14, but for which plenty of important groundwork is carried out in the latter half of Year 13. This time is vital as pupils begin to draft and then move towards finalising the all-important personal statement that they will eventually send to universities. Again, the previously mentioned return to school in June is another time when important work is completed with regards to this. Before moving on to the last part of the presentation, I want to mention some of the common pitfalls that I come across as a head of year when talking to pupils who are struggling or underperforming. Whilst many of the pitfalls listed in front of you are perhaps obvious, it is worth emphasising that pupils who are proactive, enthusiastic, diligent and persistent are most likely to fulfil their potential at A-level. A-levels are demanding and while pupils may be able to rely on their natural ability at Key Stage 3 and to a lesser extent at GCSE, this is simply not the case at AS and A2 level. In my time as head of year, I have seen plenty of pupils who have excelled in junior school, but struggled in years 13 and 14 as they realise that their natural ability on its own is no longer enough. A-levels can be viewed positively as a form of assessment where pupils tend to achieve the grade, which are reflective of the time and the effort that they have invested. The last part of this presentation relates to the pastoral care provision within Grosvenor. While subject teachers are perhaps the members of staff your child will come into the most contact with over the next two years and with who they will hopefully build a positive rapport, their first port of call in a pastoral sense is their form teacher, who they will see every morning during registration from 8.45 until 9.10 a.m. The tutors will monitor areas such as attendance and punctuality, 
and pupils may approach their, their form tutor if they have any specific pastoral concerns. As head of year, I can be contacted in the majority of cases and failing that, Mr Cowan is head of senior school. Pupils may approach us directly in school or as parents and carers, you may pick up the phone to either speak to us or alternatively to arrange a meeting in person. Furthermore, should your child have a particularly sensitive pastoral concern, they can be referred to the school's Senko, Mrs Caulfield, or to New Life Counselling, where an employee from that organisation visits the school one day a week to meet these needs. In the majority of cases, referrals for these counselling sessions will be made either by myself, Mr Cowan, or Mr Young as Head of Pastoral Care. In summary, many thanks for taking the time to listen to this talk, which has hopefully provided you with some useful guidance regarding the most important features of senior school. Should you have any further queries, either now or at any point over the next two years, please do not hesitate to contact me at school. Thank you.